Hey guys, Mama Seven and Blessed here. Um, this is my second time recording this video um, because last time something happened and it did not um, record properly. Um, in this video, excuse me, I'm laying down because my back is bothering me. Um, let's turn my TV down. I am making this video in regards to voting. Now, I know this is a sensitive subject. I know that um, this is something that a lot of people feel passionate about, especially now being that we have a, a black president. And I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm just here to speak from my heart um, and speak whatever God would have me to say. Um, I would just like to say that, you know, I, for one, am choosing not to vote. I know people might have their opinion about that. You know, they'll say, well, you know, you're a mom of seven. It's your children's vote. I've had family members tell me, Oh my God, you can't be serious. You got to vote. This is a black president. You know what's going to happen to us. Um, you know what's going to happen in the world and different things like that. If you don't vote for Obama, then you're, it's like you're voting for the other, other candidate. Listen, I understand and I get all that. Let me just say this. I'm a firm believer of stand for something or you fall for anything. Now, I would say, like, the biggie for me with this whole election process and things like that is that I look around and I see members of the body of Christ, people that say they're saved, say that they love the Lord, they call themselves prophets, some of them, some of them call themselves pastors, whatever you want to call it, they say that they're mouthpieces for Christ. But at the same time, they're endorsing a person that is going against and making laws pertaining to what the Word of God says that we should not do as a people. And my thing is, listen, I don't believe in gay marriage. I don't believe in abortion. I've experienced abortion. And once God convicted my spirit about it, just like with anything else, when God convicts you, because of your love for Him and because of your faith and your trust in Him, you do a 360, you do a turn, and you don't go back in that direction. Life comes from God. God, he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. It says that in John 10.10. 10. It is the thief that cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. The enemy's tactic is to steal the word of God from our hearts. He's to steal it. He even wants to steal it from outside the church. And the thing about it is, is that when you say you love God and you live for Him and that you 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 worship Him and people need to understand worship is just not not just uh, going to church and lifting up your hands and praising God and jumping around and hooping and hollering. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a way of life. Worship is walking in the Word of God day in and day out the best way you know how. What I love about Christ so much that that causes me to follow him in the midst of everything that Satan tries to bring in my way is how good he's been and just how he's always there, how he's omnipresent and how he's there for us and our time of need. What people need to realize is that no matter who you vote for, it's all going to boil down to you needing Christ. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him anyway. It does not matter who is in office. Because that is just a man. That is just a woman. Whoever it may be, you have to look beyond them and follow Christ. All these politics and different things like that is just distraction. It's distraction. It's distraction. My thing is that if the body of Christ, the body of Christ, okay, when we talk about a body, we have a head and then we have a body. And you look at this this, this way. If you were to take a pen and paper and draw a body, the head would be Christ. We allow him to lead us, to think for us, to speak for us, to guide us. The head makes the decisions, and we walk it out on the earth. 
That's what the body of Christ is. You know, if the body of Christ came together like we supposed to, we would have more power than the White House. The Bible says, if my people would humble themselves and pray, I would heal their land. I mean, nobody's, everybody, what they're doing now is they're jumping into the politics and they're getting involved with the distractions. The parable I always use, Peter walking on the water. God says, Peter, it is me. I bid you to come. I bid you to walk on the water. But in order for you to walk and to stay above the sea, you need to focus on me. Imagine walking on the water. You got waves. You got all types of stuff going on around you. And God said, I won't let you sink. Keep your eyes on me. I won't let you fall. And then he turns and he looks at this wave. Fear starts to get in. Fear starts to get in. And what does he want to do? He probably wants to run back and get on the boat. And that's what the body of Christ is doing. They're allowing a recession and everything around them to cause fear, to cause them to run to the poles. The poles is not your saving grace. Jesus Christ is your saving grace. Because at the end of the day, that's who you are need. We need him now. People are not realizing it. Why? Why? I mean, you know what? We all go through humbling experiences. We all go through humbling experiences where our attention has to be brought back to God. And a lot of us can admit it is uncomfortable. Look at the people who have experienced Hurricane Sandy. I am a born and raised New Yorker, okay? Hollis, Queens, New York, a born and raised New Yorker. New York is nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Everybody busy. Work, school, play, partying is always something to do. How they call it, the city that never sleeps. All these big cities are impacted. People are going through, they have lost their homes. They don't have anything. You think they on the phone talking to President Obama? They crying out to God, oh God, what am I going to do? My baby needs pampers. We need food. We don't have no electricity. Who is the person that you call on him? El Shaddai, the person, our provider. Okay? It all boils down to choose you this day who you're going to serve. You're going to serve Christ or you're going to serve the person in the White House that you cannot contact when you are in need. They're not going to come to your rescue personally. you got to know God on a personal level. you got to know him for who he is to you personally. We can't go around saying that we are part of the body of Christ and we elect a candidate that it, uh, uh, has um, co-signed for gay marriage, co-signed for abortion. These things are wrong. And then with the body of Christ is, does with the body of Christ, what they do is they go to church, they get around each other, they come to their little meetings and things like that, and they talk about how they want to rally against gay marriage. That's a hypocrite. That's why people don't go to church now because they look at uh, the body of Christ, they look at these churches and they say people are hypocrites. Why? Because how can you co-sign for something and then go rally against it? It defeats the purpose. All because you want a black president? We're supposed to be more spirit than we are flesh. We represent Christ in the earth. His Holy Spirit dwells in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within us. He gives a, us a conviction. To whom much is given, much is required. He said, I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Don't you know Satan don't care nothing about us. He don't care if we go. I heard Creflo say it like this one time, and, uh, you know, I just listen to some things. Sometimes you got to, how they say, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Satan wouldn't care if we were to die and to go to heaven right now, long as we don't interfere with his earthly agenda. His earthly agenda, him and his demons, is to take as many of the people as hell as possible. Because he knows he will never end up in heaven again. He knows that that chance is gone for him. It's done. He had the opportunity. He ruined it. You know how they say, uh, misery loves company? Satan is miserable. He'll be miserable forever. And as long as he can take you with him, he'll do what he got to do. Don't think that you're going to serve God and you're going to turn around and do for Christ and then it's going to be easy because it's not going to be easy because he's going to try. He's going to set up an army 
against you, to try and come up against you. But you got to understand, when you serve God, it's more with us than it is with them. That's if you decide to walk with Christ. It is more with us than it is with them. We got to pay attention. This is the enemy's tactics of distraction. We got to pay attention. No, we're not perfect. And that's what makes me love God more and more every day with my flaws. I deal with doubt, unbelief. I allow, uh, I allow the enemy to hit me with anxiety and depression that I have to fight off. And some days I feel so weak, I don't know what to do. But his strength is perfect in my weakness. When he says no weapon formed against you shall prosper, you got to trust him where you can't trace him. And at the end of the day, Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, and whoever else in the White House, they need Jesus like never before because they're a puppet for the enemy. You cannot serve two masters. Two masters. You can't serve God and you can't serve Satan. This is a battle. It is a battle. you got to set your feet like flint and say, I will not allow Satan to confuse me. It is not a matter of who's against who and what's against what. If there would be some unity, do you understand what we could do to the kingdom of darkness? Those of you who have children need to understand how important it is for us to walk in the way of the light so that our children will follow. I choose to stand on his word because his word has me breathing, moving, speaking, seeing, talking, eating. Everything I do, I do in him. There's some issues I have with anger. There's different things that I battle every day. That's the tactic of the enemy. But the Bible tells me what makes me stand firm. Even days where I snap out and I might get out of character, the Bible tells me that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, the word that Jesus promised me that I am an overcomer. Because when God sent him to die on a cross for me, he said, it is finished. We are a finished work. It is our choice to believe it. America has become and allowed the Babylonian spirit to suck the life of Christ out of them. He said the faith the size of a mustard seed. You know how tiny a mustard seed is? Just that little bit of faith can move mountains. But we allow Satan to suck it out of us through distractions. Clothes, cars, houses, luxury. All the things that we cannot take with us when we leave here. At the end of the day, what I'm saying, the most important thing is to live your, Christ for, live your life for Christ. Give your heart to him. This is a podium and a platform. You, the YouTube is a podium, a, a podium and a platform for those of us who know Christ and want to get a word out into the airwaves. Satan can't stop that because we belong to God. No evil shall befall us, neither shall any plagues or calamities come near our dwelling. The Lord said in his word that he would give his angels charge over us, and they keep us in all our ways, and in our pathway is life, health, and healing. What we do is we be obedient to him, and we trust him with our life. We trust him with our life. And I'd like to say this, too. We have different... You know, they got Yankee Stadium, Jay-Z, he did, built the Mets Stadium. You know, it's just so funny how you go to church and we're supposed to be a body of Christ. And when you have a body, can your body function when one arm is cut off and thrown over here, one leg is cut off and thrown over here? No, you're a cripple. The church is crippled. The church has been crippled. Too much separation. The world has already made a separation of church and state. Now the church has come amongst itself to separate itself from amongst each other. So now it looks like cults and clans. Nobody can come together. The Bible says where two or more agree, I will be in their midst. How can we affect this earth? We have got to come together and become one. This right here says a lot. Because we have a place where uh, I'm at, a casino where NASCAR comes, and it's a big arena where they come, seats thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, I would guess. I mean, you go to any of these churches around here on every corner, 
every Sunday morning, the way they beg for money and they want to build up their little place so that if this is this church and we are us. And then up the block, that's that church and we are us. And then you have to ask, like, okay, are y'all serving the same God? Why so much division? If anything, take all that money. Okay, stop this every Sunday thing. Meet in your state to impact your state once a month or, you know, once or twice a month. Rent, down, rent out those arenas. Thousands and thousands of people. Let them come in and pray where two or more agree. You can bust the gates of hell wide open. The angels will come in and they will tackle them spirits, them strong, uh, the, the, the strong men. All these states and all these cities have strong men over it. Drugs, prostitution, lesbianism, rape, incest. Who's going to bind a strong man? Jesus, he died. He died. And God said, y'all got the power. Because I sent my son, and then the Holy Spirit has come to dwell within us. And that's where we get our power. Those that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Man, the church is in trouble. Huh. If y'all don't get it together, if we don't get it together, because I'm speaking for myself, we got to get it together. I got to get it together. I have to stop allowing the enemy to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. Because we have that right. God has put his power within us from the belly up to say, this is what it's going to be. Why? Because it's a finished work. So at the end of the day, with voting, I say, use your discernment. And the only way you can have discernment is to allow the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and dwell in you, okay? And the thing is, is that if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, ask Him to come in. Repent of your sins. Tell Him you're sorry. Ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. Give your life to Him. Lord, I'm sorry. I need you in my life. I want to be saved. Come into my life to stay. I need you, Jesus. He hears you with a pure and sincere heart. Listen, if we got to do it every day, that's what we got to do. We are imperfect, but we are still a finished work because he saw it before we did. So what we're walking in is finished work, but we got to walk that narrow line. We got to say, okay, Lord, this is what I choose to do. You got to be loyal to him first before you could be loyal to anybody else. You got to love him first before you could love anybody else. And the thing that the fact of the matter is is that we got to learn. That we got to love ourselves enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow the enemy to make a mockery out of my Savior. It's very important that we don't let the things of this world corrupt the things of the Spirit. If you live for Christ, you are a peculiar people. You come through things that the world say you could never make it through. And you're able to look up and say, only God, not the president, not the person on the Senate Council, not the mayor, not the governor, only him. So I just say to y'all, you know, this is my view on it. And um, I believe this is also God's view on it. But, um, you know, I just like to say, you know, God bless everybody. Um, I'm not here to offend you guys. This is just something that I'm speaking and um, I believe that this is something that needs to come to pass. I believe that God is, he's watching, and he's saying, all he can do is shake his head with Jesus at his right hand. Forgive them, Father, for they know what, not what they do. And you want to go against that? Come on, people. We got to open our eyes. So until then... You guys have a blessed night.